a voicemail system. Service is provided in high definition by free conference call HD.com. Please enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. Access code accepted. Please announce yourself. Thank coming up. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing live. I'm doing live. Okay, I'm going to ask uh, just open up. I want to welcome all the sisters to the call and, um, and just a gentle reminder to mute your, your phone when the imam begins his lesson and he will answer questions and you can unmute your phone but please make sure there's no background noises. Then if you can re mute your phone after the question is answered. Uh, so everyone, you can mute your phone at this time and inshallah Imam, you can begin the class. Jazakallah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Um, alhamdulillah. Um, thank you, Sister Nisa, for um, providing us with this platform and the opportunity to uh, meet every uh, month to just have a, a brief discussion related to issues that are <clears throat> affecting the sisters in the community. And as I said before, it was the Prophet Sallallahu Sunnah to take out time of his life, of his, um, his busy schedule, his busy life to address the women in the community. And um, Alhamdulillah, today, we're going to talk about something very important. Um, and that is the stress that is associated with domestic engineering, meaning being a housewife, being a mother, being, you know, uh, a wife and all of the responsibilities that come along with that. And I think that sometimes as men, we're, we're not as sensitive as we should be, you know, to all of the things that, you know, many women are overwhelmed with a lot of women work a lot of women and we're, we're i'm not even talking about single sisters i'm not even talking about single mothers i'm talking about married sisters so you can only imagine what a woman who's a single mother is experiencing uh multiply it times 10 if you are a single mother we're talking about women who have husbands in the home have older sons that older children that can shoulder some of the responsibility Yet you find many women overwhelmed with their task of being uh, domestic engineers. And that is the title. This whole housewife thing is antiquated and is played out. You are a domestic engineer. All right. You make executive decisions in the home. Bills have to be paid. House have to be clean. Children have to be educated. Children have to be nurtured and cared for. You have to be selective about the food that you are putting into the bodies of your children. You have to make sure you clip their nails. You have to make sure the hair is done. You have to make sure the tub is clean before you actually give them a bath. I mean, all of these things and, you know, women, you guys in the home have to shoulder in many instances while you have husbands have to shoulder all of this by yourself. And it could be overwhelming. I'm aware it could be overwhelming. Sometimes uh, one of my wives may leave my children with me, you know, for a few hours. And within that few hour span of time, we only get to experience what, you know, you guys experience on a day to day basis. You don't get to put your domestic engineering on pause. You're a mother 24 seven, you're a wife 24 seven, you are professional 24 seven. You, you wear so many different hats. And as we're gonna see in the hadith that I'm gonna to mention today, that many of the women of the Sahaba, they felt the same exact way. 
many of the women of the Sahaba, they felt the same exact way. They felt the same pressures. Um, they felt the same feeling of, over, of being overwhelmed that many of our sisters feel. And we're going to see how the Prophet Sallallahu helped to heal you know, that stress and to heal that, that feeling of being overwhelmed with his wisdom, Subhan, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it just, you know, I just want, you know, sisters to understand that, you know, when you find a man who is sensitive to, um, you know, these feelings that you have, then know that you have a good spouse. Know that you have a good husband. Because sometimes women, you have a good husband. Sometimes you have a good man. And sometimes it's very hard for you to distinguish what is good from what is not good because you don't have a gauge. If you've been married to the same man for many years, and that is you know, pretty much the only relationship or the only real relationship that you've been in, nine times out of ten, you underappreciate that man because you don't have anything to gauge it against. So you tend to, you know, wish and desire that maybe you had, you know, someone better. And the fact of the matter is that you do have someone good. If you have a man that appreciates what you bring to the table in terms of your domestic engineering, he appreciates you. He gives you, you know, good praises. He gives you, you know, words, kind words and encouragement and things like that. They know that you have a good man. He's not going to be 100 percent. None of us are. None of us are. Okay, but I'm going to give you an example from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of how women were stressed and overwhelmed with their domestic engineering task. And they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you can hear in this woman's pleading with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can hear in her voice the pain and the stress that she was experiencing, not just her, but the other women that she represented when she came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with this request. So this hadith, is on the authority of Asma bintu Yazid al Ansariya. It's on the authority of Asma bintu Yazid al Ansariya. And as I mentioned to you guys before, that the women of the Ansar they were a little bit more aggressive than the women from Mecca. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said, "Nahnu ma'ashar al Quraysh kunna naghribu nisa'ana." He said, we the people of Mecca, we were more aggressive than our women. We were, we were more aggressive in Mecca than our women. He said, but when we migrated to Medina, we found the Ansar to be the type of people where their women were more aggressive than they were. The, the women were more aggressive than the men. He said, and lo and behold, that our women from Mecca begin to intermingle with the women from Medina and they begin to assimilate. They begin to take on the same qualities of being, you know, aggressive with their men. So I'm, I'm laying that down as a premise for my discussion to show you that the women from the Ansar, they were very assertive, very aggressive when it came to getting their needs met. So when I talk, tell you that this was a woman from the Ansar and then you, you come you know, in contact with the rest of the story, then you'll understand why she was as assertive as she was. All right. So on the authority of Asma bintu Yazid al-Ansariya, so she was from the Ansar. <laughs> that she went to the Prophet and she walked right up to him while he was sitting with the rest of his companions. Now, a woman from Mecca probably would not have done this. And every, probably every incident that I can think of where a woman approached the Prophet ﷺ like this in front of other women, most of those women were from Medina. They were from the Ansar. She walked right up to the Prophet ﷺ. Just imagine this scene. Let me try to paint the picture for you. So here's the Prophet ﷺ who's also Rajul Muhib. He was a man of, that, of awe. Like when you were in his presence, you sense you had a sense of awe being around him. All right, so you factor that in, just his persona, just his demeanor, the way that he carried himself. When you were in his presence, there was a sense of awe. This was a man of divine guidance. This was a man of spirituality. This is a man that was connected to God. This was a man who communicated with God. This is a man who Angel Jibreel, alayhi salam, used to come down and recite Qur'an 
with him or review the Quran with him every Ramadan. So the Prophet Sallallahu wasn't your average man. He wasn't the normal man. When you are around a person that is spiritually connected, you can feel that energy from them. You can feel the energy. When you're around anyone that is spiritually connected, you can feel the energy from them. So that's one thing. Then on top of all of that, these women, they grew up in a culture, in a society, in an environment where modesty was, you know, was a staple in their culture. Modesty was a staple in their culture. So it wasn't normal for a woman to just walk up into a crowd of men and voice her opinion. You understand? It, that was not the norm in that society, all right. It wasn't the norm in American society. It wasn't the it wasn't the norm fifty, sixty years ago in American society. Women didn't even share the mar the the workplace with men. Women had to fight for that here in America, all right. So you could see how things have changed, but uh, just understanding, you know, uh, in order to go forward, we have to go backwards, you know. To understand how we have arrived where we at right now, so she walked up to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi while he was with his companions in the middle of his companions. And for those of you that are listening, I'm also streaming it live on uh, on Periscope. So if you want to watch while you listen, or you want to listen and watch at the same time, um, you can feel free to do so, or you can go back and listen to it again. Um, I will also make the audio available as well. So she walked up to the Prophet ﷺ while he was with his companions, and she said to him, "Be abi anta wa ummi, inni wa fida tu nisa ilik, wa aalamu nafsi anna hu ma min imraatin kaina fi sharkin wa la gharbin sami'at bi makhriji hada illa wa hiya ala mithli ra'i." She said that may my mother and my father be ransomed for you. This was a phrase or a statement to gain the attention of the listener. She said, may my mother and my father be ransomed for you. Be at, be enter, be at, be enter, may my mother and my father be ransomed for you. She said, I am one. I am one of many women. I am coming to you as a delegate from the women in the community. And I know for surety that there is no woman who heard about me coming to you today, either in the East or in the West, who heard about me coming to you today, except that they hold the same opinion as I do. Meaning what I'm getting ready to say to you is not my own individual opinion, but this is the opinion that are shared by many women in our community from the East to the West. So this shows you that the women, they had discussions amongst themselves before they decided that Asma was going to be the one to go to the Prophet Sallallahu They had already discussed this, meaning the women had already gathered and been and uh, and started a conversation amongst themselves about this thing that she is about to bring to the Prophet Sallallahu And this shows you that there was organization amongst the Sahabiya. I think that a lot of you women, you, you have the ability to organize. I just think that some of the, you know, the stigmas of women speaking in front of men and women, you know, organizing and, you know, putting things together. I think that the stigma that is associated with that has stifled a lot of the sisters. And so therefore, a lot of your needs are not being met. A lot of your needs collectively in the community are not being met. Whether in your local Islamic communities or whether globally as women, you know, an American Muslim community diaspora, it's, your needs are not being met. I have yet to hear a conference or a lecture on domestic violence. I have yet to hear it. And I would be there to advocate for that. But women have to organize. You know, we see a lot of, you know, uh, fashion shows. And, you know, you guys organize when it comes to things like that. But when it comes to real matters, real issues, right? Housewives matters, <laughs> right? Domestic engineers matter. And you're, in, and you're suffering in silence. Many women are in their homes, married, thought that they were walking into the bliss of, you know, marital happiness, only to be walking into the wilderness 
of loneliness. Because as you're married, your spouse is emotionally unavailable. You're left to, you know, you know, foot the bills for the house all by yourself. You're left to shoulder the task of rearing the children all by yourself. And it's overwhelming. I get it. But when are you women collectively going to come together and organize? She said that there's no woman in the East or the West that heard about me coming to you today with this issue I'm getting ready to present to you, except that uh, that they are upon the same opinion or they hold the same opinion that I hold. Meaning, I am not coming to you as an individual. And what you have in our communities amongst women is individualism. Everybody is out for self. And that's a problem. Everybody is out for self. There's no collective organizational effort. And I'm not saying, I, I hate to you know, sound so emphatic. I'm sure that there are, um, you know, within you know, your sister's groups and organizations, I'm sure that there's some level of organization. But your needs are not being met. The men are not hearing you in the community. The men are not hearing you and you have to figure out a way to make the men in the community hear your needs. As these women, as this woman came to the Prophet Sallallahu to discuss her issue. She said, She said, Allah sent you with the truth to both men and women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you, O Muhammad, with the truth to men and women. In another narration, she said, Ya Rasulullah, Rabb al-Rijal wa Rabb al-Nisa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She said, O Messenger of Allah, Allah is the Lord of the men and the Lord of the women. Powerful, man. I mean, like, if I could just paint this scenery for you. Powerful. She walks up to him in front of all of his companions. And it shows you how, you know, how urgent you know, this, you know, this need to be heard was that she would risk it all walking right up in front of the Prophet Sallallahu while he is with his companions and using the language that he, she is using. It's not just the scene, but also the language that she's using, the language she's using. She said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you with the truth to men and women, meaning men are not exclusive to your da'wah. Men don't have it all. Like all of your time is made for the men. They they make off with all of your time. She said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbu Nisa, Rabbu Rijal wa Rabbu Nisa. She said, Allah is the Lord of the men and the Lord of the women. She said, Wa Adam Abu Rijal wa Abu Nisa. She said, and Adam is the father of the men and the father of the women. She said, Wa Hawa Umm Rijal wa Umm Nisa. She said, and Hawa, Eve, Adam's wife, is the mother of the men and the mother of the women. And Allah sent you to the men and to the women. Make it very clear. Please ask the sister to meet, uh, mute her phone, please. Please, sister, mute your phone on star six because the lesson has begun. Thank you. She said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of the men and the Lord of the women. She said, فَآمَنَّا بِكَ وَبِإِلَٰهِكَ الَّذِي أَرَسَلَكَ She said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you to the men and to the women. And we, as the women, we've believed in you. We believed in you. وَبِإِلَٰهِكَ الَّذِي أَرَسَلَكَ And we believed in the Lord that sent you. We believed in you. It wasn't just the men in the community that believed in you. We believe in you too. فَآمَنَّا بِكْ وَبِإِلَٰهِكَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَكَ We believed in you and we believed in the Lord that sent you. She said, وَإِنَّا مَعَشْرَ مَحْصُورَاتِ مَقْصُورَاتِ قَوَاعِدْ بُيُوتِكُمْ She said, we, the women in the community, we guard our chastity. محصورات. We are... Women who guarded our chastity and we're held captives in your home. Maksurat, mahsurat, we are held captives in your homes as men. Mahsurat, we're held captives in your homes. Wamakdi shahawatikum, and we fulfill your desires. We have sexual relations with you, we satisfy your carnal desires. 
We're held as captives in your home. We satisfy your desires. وَحَمِلَتْ أَوْلَادِكُمْ And we, have, we give birth to your children. وَإِنَّكُمْ مَعْشَرَ الرِّجَالِ فُضِّلْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا بِالْجُمْعَةِ وَالْجَمَعَاتِ وَإِيَادَةَ الْمَرِيدِ الْمَرْضَى وَالشُّهُودَ الْجَنَازَةِ الْجَنَائِزِ وَالْحَجْ بَعْدَ الْحَجْ وَأَفْضَلْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْجِهَادِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ She said that we, the women in the community, we are held captives in your home. Mahsurat. Qawa'id buyutikum. We stay in your homes. We're captives in your homes. Maqdi. Maqda shahawatakum. That we satisfy your desires when you need. You're out and about in the world. When you come home and you're ready to have sex, we, you know, satisfy your desires even though we don't want to. Even though we don't feel like it. Even though we're tired, we're exhausted. And we satisfy your desires. She said, Hamilat Oladikum, we give birth to your children. We have child after child after child, baby after baby after baby. And all that comes along with having the child, the postpartum depression, right? The breastfeeding. You know, you can't even dress nice because your milk is overflowing constantly. You walk around for the next seven to eight, nine, ten months smelling like milk. Your clothes smell like milk. Your husband might even be turned off at that particular period of time from you. You know, because you are breastfeeding his child, right? You have some panel of some brothers who said that, you know, I'm not attracted to my wife. How could, how could you say you're not attracted to your wife? She had your child. <laughs> she gave birth to your children. So while you run around the community holding your daughter, holding your son, taking pride in your children, you are now less attracted to the woman who gave birth to them. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Go figure. <laughs> I'm amazed at how brothers say, oh, I'm not attracted to her anymore. She put on too much weight. She didn't put on weight because she just decided to start eating. She put on weight because she had your child. And then after having your child, she went through postpartum depression. On top of all of that. And none of that is factored in. So I'm no longer attracted to you. So I'm going to go get another wife. MashaAllah, that's the solution to your problem, right? We only hope that when we get old as men, that our wives extend to us the same mercy. It's just a hope. Because men, we don't think about when we get old and we don't have all our children are grown, all our children are gone, and we don't have anybody to take care of us. You got this, this woman that is still there by your side to take care of you. But you can hear the pain and the stress in her voice. She said, we the women are held captives in your home. We stay in your houses. We, we satisfy your desires. We give birth to your children. She said, She said, And you men, you men, have been given a virtue over us. You get to go to Jumu'ah. And you go to the five daily prayers. This, this is the luxury that you guys have as men. Some women don't have the luxury of going to Jumu'ah. I stream my khutbahs live because you have many women who work and don't have the luxury of going to Jumu'ah. While the brother, mashallah, he goes to Jumu'ah. He ain't got a job the first, mashallah, but he goes to Jumu'ah. She's at work, got to watch Jumu'ah from work. She said, but you men have a virtue over us because now you get to go to Jumu'ah. You get to go to the five daily prayers. Women don't have the luxury of going out to the masjid for five daily prayers. They have children. They have work. They have all of the things. And then on top of all of that, they're overwhelmed. When does a woman have the luxury to going out praying five times a day? So the man can sit at home, play with the children. Then when it's time for salat, here, honey, take the baby. I'm going to pray. We have that luxury. She says, so you men, you have been given the virtue of going to Jumu'ah. You go to the Jama'at, you go to the five daily prayers. She said, well, Iyadat al-Marda, you go visit the sick. She said, well, Shuhud al is, and then you attend the Janazah prayers, the funeral prayers. Well, Hajj, Bad al-Hajj, you make Hajj one after another. You have brothers who make Hajj over and over and over again. Some have never even taken their wives to make Hajj. 
Some have taken their wives maybe once or twice to make Hajj, but you go to Hajj every single year. You go to Hajj after Hajj. She said, well, afwal min dharika, and the greatest out of all of this is that you get to fight fi sabidillah, al-jihad fi sabidillah. You get to fight in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She said, wa inna rajal minkum, idha kharaja hajan aw mu'tamiran aw murabitan hafidna lakum amwalakum. She said, and then when a man from amongst you goes out, either to go make hajj or to go make umrah, she said, or to go fight fi sabidillah in the cause of Allah. We, the women at home, hafidna lakum amwalakum. We stay at home and we preserve your wealth. We protect your money. She said, wa ghazalna lakum athwabakum. And we press your clothes and we make sure your clothes are clean. Wa rabayna lakum awladakum. And we nurture your children, take care of your kids. Right? Fama nusharikukum fil ajr. And yet, we still don't get the same reward as the men. Why? Our task as being domestic engineers is just as daunting as the task that you guys have. Why don't we get the same reward as the men? This is the woman's complaint to the Prophet ﷺ. She's, she's advocating for the women in the community to get the same reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the men get. Even though they don't necessarily do the same things that the men do. I don't know some women feel like that. You feel like these brothers, mashallah, they get to go to conferences, they get to go to lectures, they get to go to hajj, they get to go to this, they do that, and we got to stay at home and take care of these children. We got, why don't we get the same reward as they? Why don't we get the same reward as they do? It's a legitimate gripe. Listen to what the Prophet sallallahu said. She said, فَمَا نُشَارِكُكُمْ فِي الْأَجَرِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ She said, oh Messenger of Allah, why don't we get the same reward as you do? Why? Why do you guys get the luxury of doing this, this, and this? And we have to stay at home, take care of your kids, and, you know, nurture your children, walking around smelling like milk. You know, our bodies are now out of shape, and our husbands decide that we're no longer attractive to them, so they go marry someone else. Why don't we get the same reward? It's a legitimate gripe. And you can hear the pain in her voice. So the Prophet ﷺ, listen to what he said. فَالْتَفَتَ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى أصحابه بوجهه كله. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he turned around to his companions, turned his entire face around. So as he's listening to the woman, he's looking at her as she's talking, hearing her out, and he noticed the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم never cut her off. He gave her an opportunity to speak her piece. All right, give you an opportunity to speak your piece. Never cut her off. All right. This shows you that the women in the community had a voice. Women had a voice and they were heard. Some of our women, even in their own homes, are not even heard. The moment she begins to bring up, you know, issues, gripes, legitimate fear of law, sister, be grateful, sister. Obey your husband, sister. We have all of these, you know, phrases that we use to muzzle you, to silence you. But Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he heard her out, and then he turned to his companions and he said, he said to them, ثُمَّ قَالَ هَلْ سَمِعْتُمْ مَقَالَةِ إِمْرَأَةٍ قَطْ أَحْسَنْ مِنْ مَسَائِلَتِهَا فِي أَمْرِ دِينِهَا مِنْ هَذِهِ He said to his companions, have you ever heard a more eloquent statement from a woman in relation to her deen than this? SubhanAllah. Meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam validated her gripe. Validated her grievance. He said, have you ever heard a woman articulate her need in relation to her deen greater than this woman? Have you ever heard a woman articulate herself as it relates to her deen? She wasn't articulating for dunya. She didn't want more of the world. <laughs> She wanted equality in deen. She wanted equality in the religion. Similar to Um Salama who came to the Prophet and said, O Messenger of Allah, why is it that men are always mentioned in the Quran and women are never mentioned in the Quran? Why? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah, indeed the Muslim women and the Muslim men and the believing men and believing women and the believing men 
إن المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات to the end of the ayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accommodated them, the, the women in the community. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, هَلْ سَمِعْتُمْ مَقَالَةِ إِمْرَأَةٍ قَطْ Have you ever heard the speech of a woman? أَحْسَنْ مِنْ مَسَائِلَتِهَا Greater and more eloquent than the inquiry or the request of this woman as it relates to the affairs of her deen. فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ So the Sahaba, they said, O Messenger of Allah, مَا ظَنَنَّا أَنَّ إِمْرَأَةٍ تُهْتَدَى إِلَى مِثْلِ هَذَا The Sahaba said, O Messenger of Allah, we never thought a woman would be guided to such articulation. <laughs> Because it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, common that women advocated for, you know, for their issues. It wasn't common. And it's not common today that women... Force the community to, to hear them, collectively uniting and making sure that the men in the community address their grievances. There are tons of grievances in the communities. Women are being molested. Girls are being molested in their own homes, raped in their own homes, domestically abused in their own homes. Homes have now, for many Muslim women, have become not places of refuge from the world, Places where uh, places of abuse, places of torture. Subhanallah, this is what the home has become for some women. The home is supposed to be a place of you know peace and solace where you can feel like a queen, where you can feel like a king in your home. The world beats us up, and then you know we walk into our homes and we're all of a sudden a king. We're all of a sudden a queen. We have children who run to the door, meet us at the door, that have been missing us all day long. You have husband who come home with gifts for his wife, a wife who meets her at the at the door with you know lingerie and you know food and you know this is where that that exchange where we start to feel like kings and queens in our homes. And for some women, unfortunately, they sit in the car contemplating whether or not I want to go in the house. Contemplating on whether or not I want to leave the house once I get in. Sad, man. So the Sahaba said, O Messenger of Allah, We never thought that a woman would be guided to such articulation. So the Prophet ﷺ turned from his companions and turned back towards the woman and he said to her, This is what he said. He said, In sarifi ayyatuhal mara'a. In sarifi ayyatuhal mara'a. He said, Go, O woman. He said, Wa a'alami man khalfaki. Go, woman, and tell or inform all of the women that are behind you. Minan nisa. Go, in sarifi ayyatuhal mara'a. وَأَعْلَمِي مِنْ خَلْفَكِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ He said, go woman, and inform all of the women that are behind you. أَنَّ حُسْنَ تَبَعُ الْإِحْدَى كُنَّ لِزَوْجِهَا وَطَنَبِهَا مَرْضَاتِهِ وَاتِّبَاعُهَا مَوَافَقَاتِهِ يَعْدِلُ ذَارِكَ كُلَّهِ He said, go and inform the women that are behind you. That your... That your... Fulfilling your spousal duties, your domestic engineering, and you're seeking the pleasure of your husband, and you're trying to please him, even though for some men, their women are never good enough. You're trying to please him is equivalent to all of the things that you mentioned about the men. The making Hajj, the making Hajj after Hajj, Umrah, fighting fi sabidillah, Jama'a, Salatul Jama'a, Congregational Salat, Jumu'ah, all of the things that you mention about the men, you're being a domestic engineer trying to please your husband, even though he's never going to be satisfied with you. Some men are just never satisfied. You're never going to be good enough. It's not you, sister, it's him. Make no mistake about that. 
Don't ever fault yourself. Don't ever keep telling yourself, I got to do better. I got to do... You're never going to be good enough for him. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah ta'ala, said it best. He said, um, رِضَ الناس غَايَةٌ لَنْ تُدْرَكْ وَرِضَ اللَّهِ غَايَةٌ تُدْرَكْ He said, pleasing people is a goal you can never achieve. You will never make everybody happy. Stop changing yourself. Stop changing who you are. Stop transforming and, and going into this metamorphosis and changing into something totally different just to please another human being and they will never be pleased with you, ever. If you change, then you change for you because you realize that there's some internal, you know, reconstructing that you need to do. For you, not for him. For you. If you change, you change because you recognize there are things about you that need to change. You need to reconstruct internally some of your, your issues. You need to challenge some of your demons. Not for him, for you. For you. Because what happens when you change for him and then he leaves, then you start to feel like it was all worthless. I did all of this changing for him and now he's gone. Or now he marries someone else. You see how that works? And then you do the total opposite because you feel like the change that you made was for him. But when you make the change for yourself, you make the change for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you never even, no, it doesn't matter how many people go in and out of your lives, you never feel like the change was, was unnecessary. You never feel like the change was without merit. You feel like the change was, was warranted. It doesn't matter who was in and out of my life, the change was warranted. I needed to change that. And if that person being in your life helped you to see you needed to change that, then alhamdulillah, Allah used that person to show you the things that you needed to change. But you didn't change it for him. You changed it for you. Allah just used him to show you the things that you needed to change. And it wasn't about him. It was about you. The Prophet ﷺ said, المؤمن للمؤمن, that the believer is a mirror to another believer. So when another believer is in your life and they're mirroring to you the things that you need to change about yourself, then alhamdulillah, Allah just used that person to show you the things about yourself that you needed to change. But you didn't change for him. You changed for you. The Prophet ﷺ said, go and inform all of the women that are behind you. And the husna taba'u ihda kunna li zawjiha. That one of you fulfilling your domestic duty to your spouse, to your husband. And her seeking to please him to the best of her ability, even though he will never be satisfied. And her trying to align, you know, her, you know, uh, her domestic engineering along the lines of what will make him happy. All right, يَعْدِلُ ذَلِكَ كُلَّهِ It is equivalent to all of the things that you just mentioned about what the men get. What the men are able to do and the huge rewards that the men are able to attain. You get the same thing for just being a good old-fashioned housewife. Absolutely. Your path to Jannah is so easy. But unfortunately for many of us as men, we complicate your tasks to get to Jannah. But just understand, sister, that what doesn't challenge you is not going to change you. So if you have a husband that is unappreciative, if you have a husband that, you know, is dismissive, you have a husband that doesn't, you know, empower you to feel good about yourself and feel good about, you know, your domestic duties and your domestic engineering, then understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just placed this person as a challenge for you. And what doesn't challenge you won't change you. But you can't make your job as a mother, as a wife, contingent on whether or not your husband is happy with you, pleased with you or not. You do it for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the love of your husband. You will never be able to make him happy. You will never be able to make him pleased with you. But you will always be able to make Allah pleased with you. رِضَ nas غَايَةٌ لَن تُدْرَكْ وَرِضَ اللَّهِ غَايَةٌ تُدْرَكْ Pleasing people is a goal you can never achieve while pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a goal that you can always achieve. So the next time you feel stressed, the next time you feel overwhelmed, think about 
all of what you do as a mother, all of what you do as a wife, even if your children are not satisfied, your husband is not satisfied, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you. And your reward is magnificent just for the simple things that you do in the home, like cooking, like cleaning, like breastfeeding. All of those things are meritorious in our religion. Those things are not just, you know, duties that are upon you. These are hasanat. These are good deeds that you are storing up for yourself, even within the comfort of your own home. This is what I wanted to present. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslimin kathira wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Uh, we'll open now. We have about 20 minutes left, inshallah, uh, for questions and answers. And we'd like to keep the questions and answers to uh, the topic in specific. Sister Nisa, is there any questions? If there's no questions, then I'll um, open the periscope up for questions, inshallah. Uh, I do have one, brother. Excuse me. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Mine is uh, basically about uh, the Islamic uh, religion. Uh, I'm a Muslim. 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 Uh, I'm a